first question is from Ninja Master 166. Oh, this guy's cool. I can tell. One of Justin's friends. <laughs> yeah, my guy. I have heard some people say <laughs> that it is bad to combine fats and carbs together because it can lead to insulin resistance and more fat gain. Is there any truth to this, or is it better to just focus on eating healthy foods? So this, the opposite is true yeah, here. This, actually, this can be very, very true. So if what you're eating is too many calories, don't combine fats, proteins, or carbs. <laughs> yeah. Don't have anything at all because yeah. yeah. you'll eat too yeah. much. And then, so you know what's funny about this is I've heard people say this, yeah. um, that you know don't combine this and that and the other. The only long-term health practices that, that really communicate this are Ayurvedic medicine, Sometimes they'll communicate not combining certain foods. Um, Chinese medicine will do the same thing. Now, they don't say fat gain or insulin resistance. They use their terminology, which, you know, there's, there, I forgot what they use in Ayurvedic medicine. I can't remember the names of them. Um, there's like different forms of energy. I can't remember what they are. You know, Chinese medicine, they'll talk about yin and yang in the body. So I'm sure there's some truth to combinations in regards to energy levels and digestion in particular but this is a very individual thing this is not a general statement that those 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 you know those forms of yeah. medicines tend to make well the is it more like hot cold like you know in terms of spices and like what it, yeah i, I don't want to represent them because i don't know them I well enough know, but yeah. i have heard them say you know they'll, they'll and i know this because i've worked with them not personally but i've worked with them with clients where a client will seek out alternative medicine <laughs> then they'll come to me and say oh my practitioner said to not eat you know these foods are combined these foods and you know these are these are long traditions so i'm sure there's some truth to what they're saying mm -hmm. but not this 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 i don't i don't necessarily see well not only issue. that but this is the opposite it's the opposite of this is true it, you, if you combine a carbohydrate with a fat you actually lower the glycemic index on the on the carbohydrate yeah that's true huh so spikes it, sugar less okay. yes it spikes yeah. sugar less so the the opposite is true eating carbohydrate all by itself will actually will spike your blood sugar level mm -hmm. faster than if you actually pair it with a fat or a protein. Yeah. So that's like, uh, and I remember uh, playing with this like when we when I was trying to like uh, time like a pump or time like the way I looked on stage. You know, if I just had like a carb by itself, I would fill up really quick, but then I would flatten back out really really quick also. And by me actually eating it or pairing, remember I told you guys like I I pieced together like the chicken, the avocado, and oh, the rice right. was like this. And if I pulled the avocado out of it, as crazy as me, it changed the way I would look on your station. muscles will would look less full. Yeah, they would they would hmm. they, what they would do is it would it would they would get filled up, but then they would deflate really quick. Interesting. Where when I would add a fat into the meal, it would actually fill up slower, but then would maintain that for a little bit longer and then come back down. So I, it made it easier for me to time a look on stage. Now that for me, that's what that's for. It has nothing to do mm. with me gaining body fat or not. Like, but that's, we, I would manipulate adding fats with carbohydrates to slow down the digestive process. So it would fill, fill me in at a slower rate instead of really fast and then leave really fast. Yeah. On the list of priorities, uh, yeah, this is splitting hairs. Yeah. This is like somewhere near number 2000. I would say I, I wouldn't worry too much <laughs> about this. You know what you should pay <laughs> attention to? Seven, seven. Yeah, You should pay attention to combining foods and your digestion. Now I've heard this from people where they'll say, yeah. if I combine these kinds of foods, um, I start to get digestive issues. You should pay attention to that, but that's very individual. Uh, that's typically nothing general that you can apply. Yeah, that's more like that. you combining two foods that you might be slightly intolerant to. Right, and mm -hmm. now you've got a bigger and now you've got to figure out which one it was and yeah, do your homework. So right. I so I noticed this with like if I go have like a cheeseburger, I, I noticed that the the combination oh, the of the cheese and the, and the gluten together is like the perfect storm for me to, to be bloated and digestive issues mm -hmm. afterwards. If I get rid of the bun and I have just like a, a like a, a burger and cheese, I'm mm -hmm. okay. If I just have a hamburger, I'm less as I'm not as bad. So it's the combination of me doing the gluten and the dairy in one meal that just hammer and then you throw in some fries too, a bunch of carbs and extra calories. It's just like the perfect storm for me to feel absolutely bloated and terrible afterwards. So that, but that's individual. That's mm -hmm. me, right? I know that my body is affected that way by those foods, and my body seems to handle them by themselves in smaller doses. I had, you know, last night I was had a bowl. By the way, I had the new bowl of uh, peanut butter magic spoon. I know it's oh, not a commercial for them today, but by yeah. the way, that was phenomenal. And I had it with I had it with whole milk, and I normally don't do that, but just whole milk by itself doesn't really bother me that much. But if I have 
you know, whole milk, and then I also have cheese later on, and then I have ice cream or something. It's like then it's just too much. Is that so, why you were blasting us earlier and before the podcast? Started? Oh yeah, <laughs> I call you out on that. He was, uh, he was doing some trumpet, just no, good, do trumpet music. Look, over. Here, there, don't the, do that. Katrina still doesn't think I hear that. You, he, mm. Katrina, he farts all yeah. the time. I think he saves it for us because he won't fart. We'll start him. videoing it. There's two uh, main things you could do to fight or to prevent uh, insulin resistance. The two biggest things you can do are not overeat, and then here's the second one: build muscle. Muscle is incredibly protective in this uh, particular case because muscle um, helps soak up and absorb glycogen and it helps control blood sugar. People with more muscle are far less likely to have insulin resistance than people with less muscle. Mm -hmm. um, so those two things are the things you should focus on and not really food combinations.